when we started getting all that money funneling into the country after the end of World War II, and the Social Democrats were all like, look at us, how good socialism is working. Yes. And it had nothing to do with them. In fact, their policies, big government policies, um, wasted all that money. And you know, in the 1990s, we actually had to devaluate our currency against the dollar. 30% of everything was lost because of the, the welfare state they built up. If you listen to our uh, socialist Democrats or democratic socialists or whatever the hell they are these days, uh, I keep saying they're gonna drop the Democrat part soon enough. What they always say is, we should be more like Sweden. AOC says this, Bernie says this. I doubt that AOC has ever been to Sweden. Mm. Perhaps Bernie has been to Sweden. But they say the Nordic countries usually, but it's specifically we should be more like Sweden. Now you guys have 10 million people, we have 350 million people, we have people from every walk of life, from every corner of the earth. You guys mainly were a homogenous society into the last couple of years. There's all sorts of reasons that that analogy doesn't quite make sense. But when you hear that, America should be more like Sweden. What, what is that? Nothing pushes my buttons <laughs> than when I hear stuff like that. You know, and this comes out of the mouth of what, Bernie Sanders or, or Elizabeth Warren. L let's clear this up once and for all. Sweden was never a socialist country in the sense that the Eastern Bloc was, you know, Soviet Union and so forth. When Sweden became wealthy, this was during the, the last part of the 1800s, we had a bunch of laissez-faire reforms done. And so we, that's when we started the transformation to industrialize. We were actually quite late to the game. It was these, you know, market, free market reforms. That, so when you got the government out, laissez-faire, yes. suddenly the economy starts booming, okay? Johan August Grippenstedt is the name of the guy that was very forward-thinking, uh, that, that made these reforms possible. Uh, and then things started getting better, better after that. The other thing you need to remember, is that when, when we started getting all that money funneling into the country after the end of World War II, and the Social Democrats were all like, look at us, how good socialism is working. Yes. And it had nothing to do with them. In fact, their policies, big government policies, um, wasted all that money. And you know, in the 1990s, we actually had to devaluate our currency against the dollar. 30% of everything was lost because of the, the welfare state they built up. So if you hear Bernie Sanders or, or Warren say stuff like, we need to be more like Sweden, well, the, the part they're missing is that what was good about Sweden was free market oriented. What was bad about Sweden, we, we turned out into a decent country in spite of socialism, not because of. Can, can you add to that? Uh, that I can confirm that is, yeah. that is true and you can look it up, it's factual. Yes. Yeah. So when you guys hear that, and doing what you are doing, I mean, as you, it just makes your head spin, sort of feel like you're gonna smack somebody. Well, I love my job, yeah. I really do. Um, because uh, I get to uh, piss people off, and I believe what Larry David once said, that if you have the opportunity to annoy someone, you should take it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, you, you are doing that. Yeah, you're doing just fine then. But do you think part of the issue here is that the exterior of Sweden looks a certain way? So for example, uh, I had two trips to Sweden, to Stockholm, and I was only in Stockholm, so what I'm, what I'm seeing is a very snapshot version. Mm. But just from walking around Stockholm, or maybe what we see in the media, if or in the movies, if they show someone from Sweden, they're always very tall, they look very good, you know, they're, they're blonde like you, and they're uh, in nice jackets. And what I noticed from walking around Stockholm was it looked like everyone bought their clothes that morning. Everyone looked <laughs> fantastic. They, everything was clean, the streets were clean, all of those things. Now I get it, it's a very small little micro version of this. But is that part of the problem, that the veneer of this somehow is still selling well, or something like that, outside of? Your borders? Absolutely. Uh, I think it's a, sort of a Potemkin village, if you know what that yeah, is. There's yeah. a, it's a backdrop, and behind it, well, it reminds me of Hollywood that way. Yeah, uh, you're in the right town. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you um, if you look at it in front, it looks good. But if you look behind the curtain, you but you don't hide your homeless. We would hide them. Yeah. Now we can't afford to hide them anymore. Well, we can't hide them anymore because you're here in California, where they're. Pretty much everywhere. Uh, yeah, I, I have, I have noticed. Yeah. Uh, so, so no, but I think uh, just like not speaking out against things you might see as wrong or uh, incorrect, uh, it is very important that everything looks good if you are to have uh, a culture of silence and a, a quasi-socialist state. 
are, how are you guys able to gauge how much effect you're actually having on the average Swede? I'd say, judging by the reactions we're getting from our enemies, uh, <laughs> things are going very well. Yeah. Uh, they get very upset, you know. Funnily enough, like the extreme left people, they usually do not touch me. It is the social liberals who are, you know, supposed to be like center right. Can, can you explain a little bit how what the differentiation there is for an American perspective? Because I think Americans hear that the social liberals and the far left that sounds sort of like the same thing. Of course, yeah. yes. Liberal here means a lefty, whereas in in Europe the word liberal is moving that direction in Europe as well, uh, but it still means more like the classical Austrian liberalism. Yeah, of, I, I, I'm a European liberal. Yeah, right, yes. something like that. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, me yeah. too. That's I, I would use the word, you know, fiscally conservative, but socially liberal to, yeah. to de describe myself. Yeah. Um, so that's where most of the attacks are coming from on my end, you know, from journalists, you know, people of platform, establishment media platforms, they will be very upset and they will find a single word that they don't like in a sentence, pull it out and start a tweet storm, or, you know. They will tell you things like, well, you're dangerous, you're a populistic alarmist, um, uh, you're not taking responsibility for what kind of people you take on your, to your show. And you know, going back to this thing with a canary in the coal mine, this is the thing, because all, what all of these people have been doing is working so very, very hard at guiding the population to the correct moral standpoint at the end of whatever they produce. And when you don't do that, you bring somebody else on the show and say, okay, this is a completely different perspective and I'm not going to attack you. I, I don't want to fight you. I want to explore your idea and just see what I make of it. They hate it. They do not want it. Yeah. Is there anyone politically that is echoing some of your sentiments about what's happening in Sweden? Well, Hanif Bali does uh, the job from time to time when it, his party doesn't try to rein him in. Which party when, is he part of? He's part of the moderate party. Which, Which uh, is right wing, that, that would be, by American standards, that would be like light wing. Ultra light leftists. Wing. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, like, what type of policies would they have? Just because just I'm trying to get the map. Uh, lower right. taxes, more personal responsibility and individual choice. They're trying to get it in there. But so he'd basically be a conservative or libertarian. Light, light version of the like conservative. Yeah, socially, yeah. Socially I think they call themselves conservative. liberal conservatives. Liberal conservatives. Yes. That, that sort of made that yeah, yeah. jives with me, I suppose. Mm. So I told you guys that when I was in Stockholm for the two shows with Jordan Peterson and I, I saw you there, um, that they really stuck out. Well, first off, I was, ex I was particularly excited about them because I knew that this small country was my fifth most watched country and I was like, what the hell's going on here? So I sort of, and Jordan also knew that a huge percentage of his viewership was from there. So we both sort of had that date, that first Stockholm date in our minds as something special is happening. The shows were incredible. The first show sold out literally in a minute, which is why we added the second show. The audiences were, were phenomenal. Correct me if I'm you were no, so they, they, you, you were, were so popular. There was a black market trading in tickets to your shows. I would like to say that it was Jordan that was very popular, so just for the record. But um, the, the thing that, that truly struck me was that after the show, we would do our meet and greets, and Jordan would meet with hundreds of people, mine, we would just quickly sell them basically right before the show, so I'd usually get you know 30 or 40 people because we have to do it very quick. But at the, at the two Stockholm shows, we had about 80 or 100 people. We jammed all of these people into a small room. We're sitting there and it felt like something memorable to me. It felt like everyone in that they room. They had prepared questions for you. Everyone Not Jordan, that, they had prepared for you. Everyone in that room had something written down or something on their phone or something they wanted to hand to me or a book yeah. that I should read or a story or something. And it was it was so moving to me mm. that I think I said to you, is, is there a bar around here we can go to? And we took everybody and we went to a bar and we hung out for hours and I met some Until of, they closed. Met, until they closed, they kicked yeah. us out. And I met some of the Swedish intellectuals that you guys hang out with and yeah. all these people. Anyway, I'm not even asking a question here. Well, Suffice to say that it was so obvious to me that, that something is well, going on there. You it was, could it was truly a, a, moving. Apart from having like an, a disproportionate amount of viewers for such a small country of your show uh, and Jordan's uh, videos, uh, well, you caused quite a splash. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about international issues instead of nonstop yelling, check out our international playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, check out our full episode playlist. They're all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.